Hey, Tom Altair here, functional medicine practitioner and the detox dad. Um, I'm here to talk today about Black Friday. I mean, so many people are rushing out right now and they're consuming and they're purchasing things and they're not always conscious of the results. So if you're buying a toy for your kids or you're buying some, some sort of food while you're out shopping or whatever, it's time that we start looking and we start seeing what are the results of our actions? What's happening? So I really wanted to raise awareness. I had a wonderful conversation with my friend Jay Sinha today. I actually wrote a book called Life Without Plastic. It's absolutely fantastic. It's raising my awareness for sure for the sake of, of myself, my clients, and my children, and my children's children. I think we really need to have a conversation. So we're going to talk about BPA, how plastics are causing much more than economic growth because, yes, they are rising in sales tremendously, and they're getting more and more all over the planet in our water, air, food, whatnot. And they're driving economical growth, but they're also driving, it turns out, our waist circumference. They're driving our rates of obesity and diabetes and cardiovascular disease. So we're going to look at all those things today and more. BPA sales, they're booming, okay? 18.8 .8 billion by 2019. This is a 44% jump from 2012 at 13.1 billion. They're all over the place. This is a, an industry site bragging 74 excuse me, 745 million, 840,000 pound increase in the year 2012 alone. That brought up in 2012 up to 12.1 billion pounds of this plastic substance being put out into our environment every single year. So that's a tremendous amount. And what do we see then? We see that we're getting 12 point million metric tons entering into the ocean. We're seeing by the year 2050, that's supposed to increase tremendously. In fact, by the year 2050, did you know scientists are estimating that we'll have more plastic in the oceans than fish? <laughs> so that's the plastic bags, that's the bottles, that's the straws, that's all the things, the plastic silverware that you're using that get discarded into the landfill and somehow end up in the oceans. Did you know the average household is using 1,500 bags per year? That's 3.4 million tons of plastic bags, sacks, wraps, and they're all discarded. And some of these end up in the ocean and they do not biodegrade. But not only is the ocean, it's interesting, these plastics, the bonds in the plastics are not strong. If you put heat on them, if you put salt water on them, if you put some sort of freezing, like your Tupperware in the freezer, for example, or, or frozen environments, those plastics break down and they release this chemical BPA into the atmosphere. So we're actually finding from scientific research that BPA is being found in the air all over the world. Okay, so if it's all over in the air and it's all over in the water, is it getting into humans? Absolutely. You'll find significant sources of BPA in 92.6% of the U.S. population. There are over 80 published human biomonitoring studies. So they're looking at how many of these chemicals are getting in humans. And you're going to find BPA in human tissues, whether it's the breast, the blood, the urine, other fluids, including breast milk. You're seeing BPA. These aren't people who work in the BPA industry. This is just regular people walking around. So it's at nanogram levels. Interestingly enough, the same level that we have of human estrogen. So, you know, so many people are talking about levels. They're saying, oh, it's too small. It's not, 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 not. Hey, human estrogen circulates a nanogram, picogram, teeny, teeny levels, depending on what metabolite you're talking about. And it turns out that this BPA can bind to estrogen receptors. In fact, when BPA comes into the human body, it gets metabolized by our own enzymes, and it creates something called MBP that binds to our estrogen receptors at a 100 to 1,000 times greater than BPA itself. So we're getting this constant hormone signaling and people forget what BPA is. BPA was invented in the 1890s to be used as a synthetic estrogen. In fact, from 1890 to 1930, it was added to animal feed to fatten up animals. It was used as a, as a hormone to change the adiposity, the, the growth of fat in animals. It was also used in a couple of human trials to actually increase estrogen levels in females. So, whoa, okay, we have this estrogen substance and it, it, it reacts on teeny, 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 teeny amounts like all hormones do, right? And we're pumping it in at 745 million pounds per year into our environment and it's ending up everywhere, yeah. So it's interesting, you have people who are specialists in endocrine disrupting chemicals like Dr. Theo Colburn 
And she says, aha, one in every three babies will get diabetes. One in every 88 will have autism. Where in the world is this rise in disease coming from? In less than 10 years, 80% of the population will be overweight. Is it possible something in the environment is shifting human physiology? She's noticed this in the animals and she tracked it down to these endocrine disrupting chemicals. And now she's saying it's for humans as well, gang. Look at this. Many of these disorders were once rare and are the result of fossil fuel derived chemicals interfering with our own hormones, our own endocrine system. The overarching system that integrates all our body glands like the pancreas, the thyroid, the adrenal sex organ segments of the brain. So the pancreas for diabetes, the thyroid for metabolism and weight, adrenals for stress response, sex organs for the estrogen, testosterone, progesterone, all the things that balance out our mood, our weight. And now we know even body fat, the stomach and the intestines are all part of the hormonal endocrine system and they all produce hormones and they function under hormonal control. Who has balanced, balanced guts and hormones these days? Who's, who's got normal blood sugar? So she's hypothesizing, my gosh, why are we considering the drastic rise in these chemicals in our environment? Well, Ken Cook makes a, a light of this in his 10 American speech, which is astronomically brilliant. I, I recommend that everybody watch it. And he says, look, yes, yes, we're seeing these chemicals in the umbilical cord blood of unborn children. We're seeing these chemicals everywhere and they are shifting development. And the chemical industries are telling us, don't worry, it's such a small level, don't worry about it. It's teeny, teeny, nanogram, picogram levels, these small levels. They're never gonna change physiology, don't worry about it. And yet, every day we're taking chemical substances that we know on those part per billion levels, part per trillion levels, shift physiology. They're called pharmaceuticals. We take these hormonal-like substances if we want to change pregnancy, for example, with the Nuva ring, we want to prevent pregnancy. Or in the form of Cialis, which would be considered an erectile dysfunction drug, we want to initiate procreation. So at small doses, we know we can alter physiology tremendously. And research article after research article is showing us this is the the truth with BPI as well. Teeny, teeny levels will alter cell, seg uh, cell signaling pathways, increase aggression, change puberty, change testosterone, breast cancer risk, all sorts of different things. And yes, these synthetic estrogens change weight in humans as well. We see in Korea, waist circumference shifting as BPA levels go up. We also see the levels of obesity going up two times as BPA goes up. We see in the Journal of the American Medical Association, for each standard deviation of increase of BPA that's gotten into the human body and is getting peed out, we see a 39% increase of diabetes, 39% increase of cardiovascular disease, 29%, 48% of different markers of inflammation, detoxification, liver issues. So we see changes in human physiology. We see children with the highest quartile, the, the higher levels, 2.55 times increase of obesity. If they're boys, 3.8 times. Non-Hispanic whites, 3.8 times. That's almost a four times increase rate of obesity when the levels of BPA are getting up higher. Bisphenol A plasma levels related to something called the metabolic syndrome markers. These are things you hear of like blood glucose control, waist circumference, triglyceride levels, inflammatory markers, all these things that go up that tell us hey, this person is at risk for diabetes, obesity, cardiovascular disease. You know, all these things go up when the BPA levels go up. With those in the low BPA, only 4% had these markers. And those with a higher BPA, 42% had these markers. So this is something that's real. You look in the research and you can see all the data starting to pile up, saying as these levels of these synthetic estrogens go up, the levels of some of the symptomologies of people who have excessive estrogens go up as well. It makes sense. So how can you avoid it? What can you do to reduce your exposure, the environment's exposure to BPA? Well, you can go to your grocery store and you can talk to them about converting over to something called vitamin C receipts or BPA free receipts. So normally the thermal paper has a coating on it and that coating is laden with BPA. It's one of the highest sources of BPA in the environment. 
So you go to grab a receipt and you get that BPA on your hands. You go to eat. You put that BPA onto your French fries. You get it in your mouth. That's a problem. What's even worse is if you use a hand sanitizer or you use lotion prior to grabbing a receipt, you actually do something called uh, penetrating your dermis. So your skin, there's something called dermal penetrating agents in hand sanitizers and in lotions to help that substance get past your skin. Well, not only does it help the substance get past your skin, but it helps the BPA. And you can actually increase your levels of BPA a hundredfold by using those. So watch the receipts, watch the lotions and hand sanitizers prior to touching the receipts. Talk to your grocery stores about getting PPA free receipts. That's one. Two, the other primary source of BPA for humans right now is going to be your food. You're going to have your meats wrapped in saran wrap. You're going to have some sort of milk jug or juice jug, or you're going to be pressing your coffee in something that's plastic. You're going to be doing something to provide acid or heat to plastic. Tupperware containers would be a prime example. You know, anytime you heat up pasta with that tomato sauce and you have it in your Tupperware container in your microwave, and then you pour it into your bowl, you look at your Tupperware container, you see all this red staining. Well, that's an indication that the acids and the fats actually attracted plastics out. And then the lycopene, the, the pigments from the, the tomato stuck to the plastic in its place. So these substances are not stable. The BPA, the softening agents of plastics, they don't stick to the plastic forever. You see this with your Tupperware. The more you wash it, the more you freeze it, the more it becomes brittle. The softening agent has left. That softening agent is the BPA. Could be something called phthalate as well. So we see if you just eat what's called a fresh food diet, you don't drink out of plastic, you don't eat out of plastic, you don't store your food in plastic, then your levels of BPA go down 66%. That's huge. That's astronomical. So think of this fresh food mentality. Make sure you're not touching your food to plastic. Get a stainless steel water bottle. Get containers that are stainless steel and your to-go stuff instead of styrofoam or plastic. You can have stainless steel. You can make sure they have those tight lids that lock on. I'll show you some examples. Don't use plastic wraps. Those are really soft plastics. They migrate the BPA and the phthalates quite readily. You can use a beeswax wrapper. I'll show you in a second. No canned foods. There's an epoxy BPA lining in canned foods that leaches into the foods. No nonstick cookware. Make sure your milk and orange juice are in glass, not plastic. And use only a French press to make your coffee. That research right there, these are the suggestions from the research. You can reduce 66%. If you want to know more solutions, there's a brilliant book. I just talked to my friend Jay today who published this book, Life Without Plastic. He and his partner, Chantal, they did a gorgeous job of letting us know where the sources of plastic are and what we can do to make simple changes on a daily basis. And what Jay told me today is he said, Tom, what you want to do is look at your containers. You want to look at your straws. You want to look at your water bottles. And this is a wonderful container from his site, Life Without Plastic. It's incredible. I use these every day at the office. I bring them with me when I travel. You'd be surprised how many times when you're going to get smoothies, when you're going to get coffee, when you're going to get alcoholic beverages at a bar, how many times you're given a plastic straw. These things can end up in sea turtles, nasal passages. They can end up in the ocean. They can end up in fish. So make sure you're getting stainless steel straws. You carry one around with you. It's super simple to do. You'd be surprised. You keep one in your car. You keep one in your backpack. You keep one in your briefcase. They're very convenient. And then, of course, a stainless steel water bottle. You don't have to be drinking out of all sorts of plastic all the time. In fact, when I go and I get beverages from the grocery store now, I'm making sure that the beverages, like my kombucha, for example, is coming in glass. I don't want to buy something that comes in plastic. Not only am I worried about my exposure, but I'm worried about the exposure in the air. I'm worried about the exposure in the water, the fish. I don't want to have, by the year 2050, more plastic in my ocean than there are fish. When it comes to saran wrap, they're ingenious replacements now. You use this beeswax coated organic cotton combination for saran wrap. These things are reusable. You wrap them over your fruits and vegetables, your cheese, you put them over dishes. And with your, your heat of your fingers, you can seal it to be airtight, watertight. It's amazing. All you have to do is rinse them after you use them. You can use them up to a year. You can even retreat them with a little bit of beeswax. If you want to throw them away, they're completely biodegradable. 
They're genius. These are incredible. And then of course, if you want some silver, bring your own silverware with you. So you can have a stainless steel spork like Jay recommends. I carry around a spork everywhere I go. It's just smart, simple solutions that are gonna lower the obesity risk, diabetes risk, hormone disruption of all things on the planet, not just humans, but the most susceptible population, my friends, is our kids. And we're seeing their obesity rates climb, diabetes rates, cognitive issues, and we're tracking it back to the exposure to environmental chemicals, including plastics. So I ask you on this, blast, this Black Friday to take consideration for what it is you're doing. What are the results of your actions? Are you purchasing a lot of plastic items? What's going to happen with these things? Is it possible that you could feel free, that you could feel lighter if you purchased for your friends or family some of these plastic-free items? As my kids, one of their favorite movies is The Lorax. You know, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. So please join me. Let's all together make choices that are going to preserve the health and happiness of our future generations and this beautiful planet we live on. All right. Happy Black Friday. I'm so grateful for all of you on this Thanksgiving holiday. So wishing you my best. Take care.